who am I going to talk to? I'm going to talk to visionaries, strivers of change, those dedicated to winning no matter the challenge. Who did that? Who did that? Well, the Jedbergs did that. And then everybody says, well, who are the Jedbergs? Well, the Jedbergs were an organization in World War II that was concepted in about mid-1943. So the war, by many accounts at that point in the Allies' assessment, was not in a very good spot. I mean, Germany had occupied France. They were bombing London. They were entrenched uh, throughout Europe. Superior uh, armor, superior weaponry. Uh, we were not, you know, there was not a, a total commitment you know, in terms of like, you know, we didn't know necessarily what the trajectory, the outcome of this war was going to be. I mean, there's total commitment in terms of we were, you know, dedicating a tremendous amount of resources. And, um, the Allies came to the realization that we're going to have to invade France, and if we invade France, we the only way to really do this is to is the beach at Normandy and Operation Overlord. And the, but how are we going to allow ourselves to get a beachhead? Well, we can't let the Germans reinforce the beaches. Nothing you can do about the people on the beach, you know, already entrenched in defensive positions from the German side. But we can't let reinforcements get to the beach. And if we put enough people on the beach and we hit them with air power and we we do everything we can. You know, and, and we assume loss, unfortunately, we will eventually be able to get enough people on the beach to to secure it and create a landing zone. So they concepted Operation Jedberg, and they took 100 people each from the British, uh, French, and American militaries. They recruited them generally using these nine principles that, that we talk about on the podcast, and they took them to Jedberg, Scotland. And in Jedburgh, Scotland, they broke them up into three-man teams, and they trained them as three-man teams, one American, one British, one French. And starting the night before D-Day, they parachuted behind enemy lines into occupied France, and they linked up with French resistance forces. They dropped incredible amounts of weapons, uh, incredible amounts of, of ammo. And then these Jedburgh teams trained these Af these um I almost said Afghan because Afghanistan has been on my mind, but they trained these uh these French resistance forces, and then they fought the Germans with them. And what they did is they would conduct sabotage and subversion operations against the German reinforcements trying to move to the beaches in Normandy from other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, there are stories where, where movements that would have taken a, a, a German division two, three days were taking two, three weeks wow. because of because they were constantly getting hit every night and blowing bridges and downing trees and hitting them when they were in their, their sleeping and patrol bases and stuff. And they were wildly effective in slowing down this reinforcement assault by the Germans to allow the Allies to gain the beachhead. After the war, this organization went over to the CIA and the, the American contingent, they became the operations directorate. And several years after that, they were lifted out and they went over to the U.S. Army when Special Operations, U.S. Army Special Operations Command was stood up and they became the first Green Berets. And so many of the guys who served and jumped into occupied France starting the night before D-Day eventually donned the Green Beret in front of President John F. Kennedy. And that is the lineage that uh, that I serve and that I was honored to to be a part of. And so today I tell the stories of modern day Jedbergs who are changing the world. Yeah. And that's such a good story. And, and funny enough, I mean, my dad is, is a huge history buff. So I, I've known he's taught me things growing up, but uh, I know we, he told me stories of Normandy and we've seen movies, but I had never known that the Jedberg uh, operation existed. And I don't know why that's just my fault for not seeing it. I don't know if it was secret or what, but when you told me that and you told me the story, I'm like, how have I never heard of this? Cause that's, I mean, that's, that's it, that doesn't happen. Normandy doesn't happen. Like winning the beaches of Normandy, like you said, does not happen with the Jedbergs or without them. Um, so it's just crazy to me that I'd never heard that story. 